Hello, Leo. Thank you very much for being with us today. Um, you're 18, you're a senior at a culinary high school, you're a freelance writer, and your dream job would be becoming a food critic at the New York Times. Um, you've also been engaged in a number of nonprofit activities since the age of 15. There is a, a saying I like very much that says, a falling tree makes more noise than a growing forest. Today, I'd like us to explore together both the falling trees and the growing forest. Great, so excited. So let's start with the falling trees. Um, what would you say are the most serious and urgent issues and challenges that we're facing today uh, as a society? Definitely, I'd say besides the obvious, which with climate change, racism, uh, blatant disregard for the health of others, I'd say lack of humanity and lack of empathy for other people. Um, you can walk down the street and you'll just see people acting as if nothing else is going around. You'll see violence. You'll see people being rude to each other. You'll see people with no mask on. And I'm like, where's the humanity? Where's just the basic kindness? Where's if someone falls down, you know, I live in New York City. Where's, you know, if someone falls down the stairs, right? You just, you don't even care to bat an eye. Where's the basic humanity to say, hey, let me help you out. Let me get you the help you need. Also, lack of education and ignorance, quite frankly. If I go into a room and you, you say something that's not correct, I'm going to call you out on that. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to let it pass by and say, that's right. It's not right. And I'm going to tell you why. But I'm also not just going to tell you why and just come at you and say, oh, you're wrong, blah, 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 blah. Like, no, I'm going to take the time and educate you and say, this is what it's what's like, what you said is incorrect. Um, this, these are the steps that you can take from now on and make sure to not do that again because you're not that type of person. Um, it's just the environment that nurtures you to make you think that that's the way to go on with life, but that's not true. And we can do much better. And you have to acknowledge the fact that um, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. I can say stupid things sometimes, but I'm going to acknowledge that. And I'm going to take the step from that moment on and learn from it and never do it again. Thank you very much. Um, I was very touched by what you said around the, this question of lack of, of empathy. And um, we, we are... Um, I started a nonprofit organization called, called GEMS and, and we have one, one workshop called Building the Courage in Me. Um, and we spent a whole session on this question of, of empathy, um, but also self-compassion um, because we've, we've observed that very often people who lack empathy are people who lack self-compassion because those two are very much linked. Um, do, do, you have, do you have any further thoughts on this question of empathy and self-compassion? I really like how you said self-compassion specifically just because I see people that are often mean to others, they tend to undermine themselves and they tend to be like, I can't do this. And this is just something that I've struggled with in the past. Not that I would just be mean to people, but just undermine my ability to be excellent. Um, I feel like a lot of us kind of tend to not pat ourselves on the back or not give ourselves the credit that we so well deserve. Um, that would be me in the past. And um, if you're familiar, like I've done... I've done research, I've done volunteering, I've gotten awards, and I've just kind of put it to the side. I'm like, okay, but do I really deserve that? But like, if I walk down the street today, I will walk down with confidence because I do deserve that. I worked hard for it. Um, I spent countless hours of the night um, crying because I couldn't figure out what to do. I couldn't figure out, is anyone going to read this? Is anyone going to even pay attention to me? Am I going to win this cooking competition? I deserve it. But that also doesn't mean that you should be rubbing it in anyone else's face, you know? But give yourself that pat on the back, even if it's every couple of months. What you're saying actually really touches me a lot because it, it's, um, I personally struggle a lot with this self-compassion component. At, at the personal level, how have you managed to address this question of, of, of self-compassion, which, which, as we said before, I think is key if we want to then develop real empathy, which is so key then to creating a better word. I've seen just taking days off um, I tend to fill my schedule up and I tend to just like take, if they say, Leo, can you come help us out with this workshop? Or Leo, can, you know, the junior class needs your help with this? Or uh, can you come pitch an idea? Um, I'll take it just so I don't have to think about anything else. Um, I like having my schedule full. And sometimes to this day, um, I'm still guilty of doing that. But sometimes I need to take a break and reflect on who I am as a person. And I feel like a lot of people just don't tend to give themselves breaks. Like sometimes you just need that, you know, even if it's 20 minutes and you're having a sandwich or, you know, having matcha latte or something, you need that break for yourself. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of people tend to, um, especially in society now where 
people think that you're meant to like go like robots and just complete everything and have, you know, the next pitch and have the next idea by the next day. It's not supposed to be like that. We're not made to be like that. Uh, we're made to demonstrate compassion. We're made to, yeah, come up with new ideas every day, but on our own merit. I'm a person that has mental health struggles. I'm a person that sometimes may cry to bed because I'm worried about the next day. And I have emotion, I have feelings. And I feel like a lot of people just need to make that realization that we're not meant to be like that. And it takes time. Um, it's something I definitely still struggle to with this day. But even if you take that one step, even if you take that five minutes per day and say, okay, um, let me not focus about the paper that I have in a, in, in a week or the college that I'm applying to. Let me just take a moment of self-reflection and say that I'm living life. How about I think about, you know, what I'm going to have as a snack and not worry about um, how much chubbier it's going to make me. Just enjoy it. Stop thinking about everything else and just think about yourself in that one moment. Thank, thank you very much. And, and I think this point that you're making is, is so important for everyone watching right now this conference, because it's true when we talk about social good and we thought think about this dream world that we want to create, very often people, people who are attending this conference now, I guess, who have this willingness to make a better world, might tend to forget themselves and might get burned themselves in the process. So, so thank you so much for reminding us a, a bit about this self-care elements. Um, now, mo moving to the next question in, in this documentary that, that we shot about you and that will be released soon, you, you said one, one sentence that really touched me a lot and, 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 and stayed with me to this day. You said, um, we thought, I thought we were struggling a lot as a family, but with the pandemic, I realized that others were struggling much more. Um, can you tell us a bit more about this and also what this realization kind of sparked in you? When the pandemic came, and it's funny, just because we memorized like this certain day in March when like everything ended, um, I was absent from school that day. I didn't actually go to school that day um, just because I think I overslept and I just decided to stay because I was like so tired from the day before. I was like, I'm going to stay here. And little did I know the week after that, um, I would never see my friends again. Um, to this day, I still haven't seen some of my friends and it's been like a year. I just haven't seen them just because um, some of their family members are sick. Some of them um, have lost family members because of COVID. Uh, some are just like too paranoid to even step outside, which I totally get, you know, um, you can catch the, the virus in an instant, even if you've been totally careful. And I was at lost. I spent all days, the only thing, the only three things I worried about that day, like the average day last year would be, what am I going to eat that day? Am I going to bother to even get the schoolwork done? And am I going to stay up, you know, just to on my phone watching Netflix? I was not productive at all. Um, the majority of my day was just having this identity crisis, this imposter syndrome, just because I wasn't getting anything done. And I was like, how am I ever supposed to be a food writer now? How am I ever supposed to get into the college now? I'm never going to do that. And this ruined everything for me. And until I realized in one specific week, the only time that I went out with my dad during the week was uh, to the grocery store, like to get our groceries. And I saw someone from my elementary school on a line, right? And I was like, what is this line for? And the line was for people that like, they would give these big boxes of groceries, right? And I'm like, wow. Um, like you see this like facade that people put on social media that everything's, everyone's doing just fine. And I'm like, well, like, yeah, we're in a pandemic and people are dying, but we're doing okay. Um, they're not doing okay. Um, you saw a line spanning two blocks, right? Two blocks. And even like around my apartment, um, people were just waiting there, uh, waiting to get that box. And even the box, I like, didn't have much in it. It was just like, uh, like maybe some poultry and vegetables and some canned soups, right? But they needed it because it was life or death. Otherwise, they were losing their jobs. There was no other support system for them. And I thought it was hard for me. And I'm not going to like undermine everything that I've been through. But there are people out there that have it so much harder, so much harder. And... Just seeing that one friend, like we haven't spoken in years, right? But I remember just like playing with her as like a fifth grader and everything. She was there online waiting and it seemed almost as if she was embarrassed when she saw me and I didn't talk to her. I didn't say anything, but the eye contact that we made, I was like, there was, there's no reason to be embarrassed because that could very well be me. I'd like to move to the, to the growing forest. Um, what, what are the different things that actually give you hope? I guess just seeing teenagers, um, you, you've seen everything that's happening. You've seen racism, you've seen um, unwarranted deaths for no reason. Um, there was a protest that we did in Washington Square Park, right? And 
Uh, that's just like a park, like a very popular park. And it was set by just one girl, right? Um, a girl that's quiet, a girl that's to herself. And she set the entire protest up and dozens and dozens of kids came. And I was like, wow, people really do care. And they're watching. I feel like people are just afraid to make that first step. And all you need to do is make that first step and it will make all the difference. So just take that first step. Even watching this recording of the conference is making a step within itself. And it's going to make all the difference. Just you being here and the discussion that you're going to have after this, it's going to make a big step.